Welcome to our channel, Those Twins Who Knit. I'm Jessica. And I'm Rachel. And this is a podcast where we share all the things that we've been knitting lately. So um, any of our finished objects, what we're working on, future projects, acquisitions, things like that. It's kind of in that um, traditional podcast style format that I know a lot of people on YouTube use. And since it's a new year, and this is our first official podcast of 2024, we thought it would be nice to share a little bit about how we got started with knitting, because it's been a while since we've shared that. If you are like an OG from like episode two, maybe you might remember, but we haven't really talked about that recently. So um, we've been knitting really our whole lives pretty much since what, like second grade? Yeah, I think we were seven <laughs> when our mom taught us how to knit, just like the knit and purl stitch and eventually yeah. taught us like, you know, some increases and decreases and stuff like that. Yeah, so we've been knitting, I mean, ever since then. I think it wasn't until college though that we got into garment knitting, which I think was really around like 2015, 16 when we started really getting confident of garment knitting. So, or about garment knitting. <laughs> and so ever since we've just been continuing. Yeah. And I think that college time was really, it like intersected with the time where like Instagram and Pinterest were really popular. And I think that was really how we kind of got into garment knitting was discovering that there was a whole world outside of just like the books that our mom had or like magazines and stuff Or like what that. was in the library. Or what was in the library. Yeah, yeah. It kind of exposed us to more more of the knitting community, I think. Yeah. Yeah. So it's been a while and we're excited to share some stuff about what we've been up to lately. Yeah. Before we get into that though, we did want to give a reminder to folks that we are going to be going to the uh, Caring for Your Body and Soul Makers Retreat held by Unwind Fiber Arts, um, which is a yarn store in Lee Summit, which is pretty close to um, Kansas City. So if anyone's interested in joining, we would love to see you there. I do believe the registration for hotel rooms has closed at this point, but they do still have the option to register for day passes, which includes um, like the Andrea from the Knitting PT. She's doing some workshops. It includes like yoga sessions. It includes the vendor marketplace and things like that. So like Moondrake Fibers is coming and she's gonna have um, a special uh, selection or show for this particular retreat. So those passes are still available. And I think that does include lunch too. And then there's another option if you just wanna shop and see, you know, Moondrake's collection and then um, Unwind's like vendor pop up and I think a couple of other things too. So would definitely love to see people there. There's gonna be more information down in the comments if you're interested in like checking out a link to, to get more specific information about what's included in each of those two options. Yeah, we're really excited about that event. Yeah. So, oh, and that is March 1st through 3rd. <laughs> we'll have it on screen to confirm, but it's the first weekend in March. Yes. Yeah, so that's coming up here soon. Yeah. Yeah. Um, do you want to share what you're wearing first? Sure. This is the um, Storm Sweater by Petite Knit, and I did use the recommended yarn, which is uh, Pure Gant by Sandis Garn in the color Ash Melange. I made the smallest size and I did it exactly in a pattern. I didn't make any modifications or anything other than I had to go up a needle size to get gauge. But other than that, just followed it word for word. I'm really happy with it. I think it fits really well. The sleeves are a little long. They go up to my thumbs, but I kind of like that. I, like, I feel it. like it has that like really cozy winter vibe. Um, yeah, it's like perfectly oversized. Yes. Like you don't look like you're drowning in it, but you can tell it's like a very cozy fit. It's very cozy. Yes. Yeah, I'm super happy with it. And it definitely scratched that itch that I've been having for just lots of textured yarn. Like I've been really enjoying the like knit pearl texture look. So, which is a theme in some of my other <laughs> projects right now. But um, yeah, really, really love this sweater. I am also wearing a petite knit pattern this week. Um, this is the Elizabeth Blouse by Petite Knit. And I knit it in Knitting for Olive merino and their soft silk mohair in the color navy blue and same thing i did not make any modifications the sleeves are like um you they're not bracelet length but they're not oversized either you might have made yours a little bit longer than when i made it because when really? i made this 
cardigan? Yeah, I think they were bracelet length on me. Well, I did try this on before blocking and they were, and I did kind of stretch it a little bit. Oh, that might be So it. that might have been it. I did yeah. not change anything about the pattern to it. Um, I even used the same needles that she recommended, so I really did not make any modifications at all, which does not make it super exciting, but I love the fit. I really think that it's a nice piece. So, all right, well, shall we jump into finished objects? Yeah. Um, the first finished object that I have is the Abbey sweater by Sandis Garn Design. I used Scout by Calborn Woolens uh, in the black and then their like natural colorway. And I was pretty scared about this yarn bleeding with all of these starts and everything. So I did wash the black yarn ahead of time and just vinegar and then let that dry. And I think it, it helped. I didn't, I don't think I have any color bleeding. I'll, I'll hold it up so you can confirm, but I feel like it did pretty well. It does have really high slits over here on the side, um, like where the twisted ribbing starts. You can see that the, the slit starts. And I don't know if I love that, to be honest. Like, I think it's I really don't. cute. Like, it's a really boxy fit. I like well, it. It's really cute, but I, I tend to tuck my sweaters into my shirts. And because of the slits, I don't think I can tuck my sweater in because then this on the side, it looks really weird. Yeah, I see what you're saying. So I'm going to live with it a little bit longer, but I'm kind of tempted to just sew the slit up. Yeah, it would not be hard, I don't think. No. Is fact, there any sort of space in between? Um, there's like a selvage stitch on either side of the slit, so I think I could use that to seam it and, and it wouldn't look bad. In fact, I think someone had commented when I was working on this as a whip that they ended up having to do that too because it looked, it didn't like lay the way that they wanted it to. So I don't know, I'm going to think on this a little bit more. I am considering it finished, but I might, if I find that I'm not wearing it too much, I may go back and like sew the slit up. But overall, I really love this knit. It was super fun. And I love the contiguous shaping of the shoulder since it looks like it's like a drop shoulder, but then you don't have to go and pick up stitches for the sleeve later. You can just work it like a raglan. Um, so we'll definitely be looking for more sweaters in that construction style in the near future. Yes. Yeah. I guess we didn't really share how long it's been since our last episode. It's been a while. It's been a while. <laughs> because we... I think it was like mid-December that we did a podcast and then we did two episodes of everything we knit and we did a like goals video and so between those things we didn't really feel like also posting a podcast video and then weather was horrendous here in the midwest for a while so yeah we both have finished garments among other pieces and yeah we have a lot to share yeah <laughs> Um, I also finished a garment. This is the only other one. I finished this one and then the one that I'll share here. And I don't think either of them were works in progress in the last podcast episode. It's been that long. <laughs> but uh, this is the Colette Pullover by Sari Nordland. And very similarly to what I'm wearing here, I also used Knitting for Olive, Merino, and Soft Slope Mohair held together for this piece. In this case, the... Merino is the Nordic beach color and the mohair is the marzipan color, which the marzipan is the exact same yarn that Sari Nordland used. And both of these faces are what Sari Nordland used in her pattern. I'll hold it up and see if we can get the texture. It's got kind of these like cable motifs broken up by eyelet patterns, which I thought was so cute. I really like this piece, but I don't know if I'm in love with it. Do you think if you had made like a bigger size, so slightly more yeah, oversized? The way that this fits, it is, it is somewhat oversized, but in order to achieve that oversized look that I was wanting, I really had to block this a lot. Sorry, Nordly knit this on US size four. I went up to US size 7 and was still a little bit tight on my gauge. So I went up a size from what I originally thought I would. I knit the second size as opposed to the first. And I think it fits more true to the first size because my gauge is tight. That's fine. I was using stash yarn for this. I was really motivated to get this like used up because this is yarn that has been with me for quite a while. 
So if I had had more yarn or bought yarn ahead of like, like bought intentionally it, for this project, yes, that's yeah. what, <laughs> um, I would have probably gone up to even the third or fourth size to get it really oversized. And yeah, I just feel like you can see how much I had to stretch my stitches in order to get the gauge. The other thing is I blocked this like three times because the first time I blocked it, my sleeves were ridiculously short, which then I looked at her pictures and her sleeves are a little short too. They are more like here as opposed to like here, like this piece is. And I don't know why that bothered me because her pictures look so cute, but on me, I felt like it made this sweater look too small to have short sleeves. And so I reblocked it and just stretched it to death. But then what happened when I stretched it that much is you could tell that I had like pulled on the sides. And so it was like getting these weird ridges. And so I had to block it a third time to straighten that out. I think we're finally happy with it. I think we're there, but it was a journey to get there. <laughs> and I will say this was stash yarn. So again, we knew what we were getting into, but personally with our blonde hair now because we are naturally a little bit darker. I think that this color would have been more flattering when I had dark hair. I don't know if I love it with the blonde. It's not terrible. I don't think it's bad. But I wouldn't pick it out today. It was like yarn that I was using up. So it's really cute. I'm very happy with it. Uh, the pattern itself I love. But I think just because I was working with yarn I already had and not making decisions based on like new yarn coming in, I, yeah, I, I would change some things if I was to do it again. But overall, not too bad. I'm, I'm glad that I got to knit this pattern up. I loved it when she released it. So yeah, it's an, I still love that, that that's horizontal stripe. Yeah, back. I'm very obsessed with that trend right now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so that's the only other garment that I have. I know you have more. Yeah, I've got two garments. Um, so I'll talk about one of them. This is the Audrey jacket by Coco Moore Knitwear. Uh, a lot of the test knitters have been referring to this jacket as their Chanel cardigan, which I kind of love. Um, it seems very appropriate for this style of jacket, <laughs> but the yarn is Teddy Deer and Puno, both by Gepard Yarn or Gepard Garn, um, and it was provided for the test knit, so I only had to pay for shipping, and then they sent everything for free, which was really nice. Uh, and it was the first time that I've used Boucle yarn, which is kind of why I was like really intrigued to sign up for this test knit in the first place, was because I thought it would be a good opportunity to give it a try and see if I liked it. So I'll hold it up real quick and also um, at some point we'll show some pictures of what it looks like on, but it makes a really beautiful texture. I really love the way that it like makes this kind of like sherpa fabric. And here I've got a little bit of leftover yarn, so I thought I would hold that up so you can see kind of what it looks like in the skein. The yarn is a mix of um, wool, alpaca, and nylon polyamide. And it's really fun. It's like a super bulky yarn. The only thing is, I don't know if it'll show when it's like this close, but because it has all of these like little loopies on the yarn, it it was really easy to just like slip your needle into a loop rather than where the like main yarn would be. I don't know if that makes sense, but basically like even though the, the piece is pretty much all stock and knit, it wasn't as mindless as it would have been had it been like a smooth yarn that didn't it wasn't something you'd bring to a movie theater? No, it definitely wasn't movie theater knitting because yeah, even though it doesn't like split per se, but like you can catch your needle on the little loops, um, which wasn't a big deal. It was just like something to get used to. And I'm trying to think. I think the only thing that I modified about this pattern was I cropped it by an inch. But in hindsight, I don't think I needed to do that. I think if I had made it just exactly the pattern, it would have been fine. So. I love the yarn. Yeah, it was really fun. I would definitely knit with this again. It was, it was a fun, fun little, I don't know, unique piece. I yeah. don't know how to describe it. Um, but no, really, really love it. And it's warm too, which is nice. Do you want to finish out garments since you've got another sweater? Yes. I have one more and this one was, 
feel like I'd made pretty good progress on this one in our last podcast. And then just Yeah, you were up. almost done, I think. Yeah. This is the Salty Day Sweater by Veronica Lindbergh, who goes by Kika... Kutavakika? Yes, Kutavakika. Thank you. <laughs> Um, and I used Vintage Decay by Barocco held together with a loft by Nitpicks, which is their like silk mugger blend. So I will hold this up so you can see the texture. Once again, you can see the theme is like a lot of just like horizontal stripes. <laughs> uh, but this one's kind of fun because the stripes include, um, it's not just like knits and pearls, but it also includes like lace and cables and things like that. So that was kind of fun. Um, I will say I had to block this uh, after I finished the body and before I did the sleeves because when I finished the body and tried it on, it was the ugliest thing I've ever made. Like it was horrible. I was like, this is not worth finishing. Like I need to just yeah, frog this and pretend this never happened. Step away. <laughs> Step away. <laughs> Um, but I was like, no, I've made it this far. Let's just like block it and see how it goes. And it, it looked so much better blocked. So I'm glad I did that. I almost did that with the sleeves too. And then I was like, no, I need to just trust the process because blocking helps last time. And looking back, I wish I had maybe blocked one of the sleeves before I finished both of the sleeves because they are just a little skinnier than what I thought they were going to be. For some reason, based on the pictures, I thought the sleeves are going to be like really billowy and oversized. They're not. And they fit. Yeah, like they're fine sleeves. They're just not billowy and oversized. They're just like regular sleeves. I love that the motif comes back though. Yeah. I think that's a very cute detail. Yeah. No, it's a really cute detail. I think it doesn't bother me enough to redo it. Like I still wear this sweater. Um, the way that it is. I think though if I were to ever remake it, I would either just go up, I made the, the first size in this pattern, I'd probably make the second size just so that everything was a little bit bigger, or I would maybe make the first size again, but then go up a size or two for the sleeves so they are a little more billowy. I'm not mad about it, it's just like if I made it again sort of thing, yes. something that I would change. Yeah, I like it. But yeah, I think it's very cute because it was a very fun sweater to knit up and it knit up super fast. I want to say this was on like US 8 or 9 needles, which makes it a really quick knit. And she, I didn't watch the YouTube tutorial to be honest. I thought the pattern did a fine job of explaining anything. I didn't really have any issues, um, but it's kind of nice that she does have a t video tutorial. I always, I always love that with sewing patterns. I'm like, oh, thank you. I know, with sewing patterns, I'm like, I need that. <laughs> yes. <laughs> that did remind me though. I. I did have one thing that I did change actually uh, in regards to like the pattern and that's uh, in these like little lace eyelet rows, I don't know, but in like these, these rows that are on top of like each pattern, she doesn't change the way that you knit it flat to round and so the, the row where you actually do the eyelets with all the yarn overs in the flat version, you do that on a wrong side row. So when you knit them, it looks like a pearl on the other side. But then when you switch to in the round, she doesn't have you pearl that. She still has you knit that row. So then like the, the bumps would be on the other side. And I didn't test to see if that would make a difference. I just continued in the same way that I did when it was flat. So if it would have been like would it, if it was knit on the wrong side, I purled it on the right side. Yes. Because I was just, I wanted it to look exactly the same. I didn't want you to be be able to see a difference between the, the flat and the round knitting. Maybe it wouldn't have made any difference. It probably looks the same either way, but I was just a little nervous about that. So that is one thing that I changed, but I think that was it. So yeah. So I have other finished objects from our last podcast, but we talked about them in our Everything That I Knit videos, and so we're just starting fresh, which means that I think a lot of these were not works in progress before. That's okay. Um, <laughs> the only other thing I've finished recently is another Oslo hat. I know we've all probably seen a lot of these with the Christmas season and gift knitting because they are a pretty easy pattern, but I finished it, so we're going to talk about it. <laughs> um, I knit this with 
Oh my gosh, are all of my finished objects knitting for Olive? Yeah, I think they are. Um, <laughs> this is Knitting for Olive Merino Hell Double in the color Dark Cognac. And I knit this for my husband, so it's a little bit bigger, a little bit wider. I didn't do anything except I, again, shortened the body just a little. Is that what you would call that, the body of the hat? Yeah, I would say so. No, this part. Yeah. Um, I shortened the hat about a centimeter. For myself, I shortened it two centimeters. I learned that in a previous podcast episode, if you've been with us. Um, and I am glad that I make that modification now. But it's pretty simple. Probably something we've seen before. Go girl, give us nothing. Um, while we're talking about petite knit though, this did remind me of a thought I had about this sweater. And I think she does rate this one pretty easy, but I was thinking about the fact that she rates the Elizabeth blouse as a five out of five, like difficulty wise. <laughs> and, uh, sorry, this just reminded me of it cause it's petite knit. But I was curious if anybody else had thoughts about the way she rated them because on Ravelry, I think this is rated very, very easy and that's true to what she put. But for the Elizabeth blouse, Ravelry would rate this like, it's a sliding bar, not stars, but I would probably say it would be equivalent to like three out of five at the most. And that's like based on Ravelry users input, not like Ravelry the website. Yes, exactly. Yeah. So like anyone who knits this pattern can upload what they think the difficulty rating would be. And so I guess that was just a thought that I've been thinking about as I finished this one was why she would put that difficulty or if there's like an advantage to or disadvantage to that. Um, this piece, the it does have Judy's magic cast on. Like the collar piece. Yes. Yeah. Which is not my favorite. I had to watch a tutorial and uh, really focus. I love Judy's magic cast. <laughs> now that I've done it for this whole giant thing, I feel like I, I got more confident in this piece, but I definitely had to like pull up a video and like sit very quietly in a room and be like, focus. It is definitely easier on like socks when you're doing like a toe up sock and you're only doing like 24 stitches yeah. instead of Lord knows how many I, hours. Yeah. It was a lot. I don't remember exactly, but maybe 200 or I don't know. Um, so Judy's Magic Cast On was definitely something to review, uh, but once you finish the collar, it's pretty much a classic raglan, so I thought it was interesting she rated it so difficult, and, uh, I guess maybe to deter, like, brand new knitters, like, I don't know if I would recommend this as your first sweater, but anyway, I've just been thinking about, as I've been working Petite Knits patterns, how does she rate them? <laughs> I know a lot of people knit her patterns, so yeah, if you have thoughts on that, let me know. <laughs> um, but that's the only other finished object that I'll talk about today, at least. Okay, I have two more. I have... Oh my gosh, you finished so much. Oh, well, it's been like seven weeks-ish. <laughs> yeah, but you still <laughs> got more knitting than me done. Um... The next pair that I have, this is, or the next like finished object that I have, this is the Three Leaf Socks by um, Paula Pererian, I believe is how you say it. It'll be on the screen for sure though. Um, and this was a pattern in the 52 Weeks of Socks book by uh, Line A Magazine, the volume one. So I'll hold it up real quick. You can kind of see the texture. I did use Coast to Coast Natural Sock in the color um, Gothic House with Secrets, which was part of her book, tro book tropes collection last year. So right now it's kind of, I blocked them flat, but I'll see if I can hold up the texture too. And we'll put a picture on the screen so you can see, see it, but um, it's called Three Leaves because there's like three different leaf patterns that are going yeah. on um and they're a mixture of cables and doing like lace um you know motifs like increases and decreases to get the stitches to go in different directions and then they're alternating on each sock so what was the outside or what was the inside of this sock is the inside of that one so it's like they're it's like the chart was flipped if that makes sense mm -hmm. so these were toe up socks which is I don't love, but <laughs> it's a theme right now. I'm also working on another pair of top socks. So um, 
hopefully I'll start getting a little bit more comfortable with, with doing that sort of heel turn. Um, I'm trying to think what else. I did use the second size, so I went down to a US 1 and used uh, 72 stitches all the way around. But I think that's it for these socks. They were just a fun, fun knit. I enjoyed them. Would definitely knit this again. I've got socks on the needle we'll talk about when we get to works in progress. You've got, oh, oh. I was like, do you have another one? <laughs> no. <laughs> okay. No more finished objects for me. Well, last finished object for me, this is the Weekend Hat by uh, Hiromi Nagasawa. And it is just a cabled, like, beanie style hat. I did like that the cables alternated, so like these go down and then these go up and then down which is kind of fun. Uh, I used Scout by Calborn Woolens, and I had this yarn left over from when I made the Eva Cardigan by Petite Knit in the same yarn, which is why I reached for this. But in hindsight, I don't know if this was the best color for this particular hat, because I don't know if you can even see the cables. Up close maybe, but from far away you would not. Yeah, <laughs> from here I don't think you can see them, so I'm like, I don't know why I made a cable hat with this yarn other than I just wanted to get it out of stash. I was kind of sick of looking at it and I thought it would make a good color for a hat. I probably should have just done a stockinette hat that <laughs> um, But yeah, it was a good pattern. I really enjoyed it. Um, it was written well and had um, charts and written instructions, which was really nice. So yeah, enjoyed this. I would just criticize my yarn selection, just the color selection. The yarn itself is beautiful. I love love Scout yarn, and we'll probably make many more things out of it in the future. Um, it does collect cat hair though. As I'm like looking at it, I'm like picking out little <laughs> pieces, but that's just kind of a way of life. <laughs> yeah. uh, well, I'll start on works in progress. I have been kind of enjoying, maybe not totally monogamous knitting, but I've got like one garment project, one tiny project. Right now it's socks. And I've kind of been working like that for a while, which I really enjoyed. I hope that I stay with that for a little bit because... That's exactly what I'm doing right now. Yeah, sometimes yeah. if I get a lot of whips, it's like overwhelming. I know there's people out there like, I see you with 10 plus whips, but I just don't know that that's me right now. So anyway, the tiny work in progress that I'll start with since you talked about your socks is that I've got socks right now. One is finished and one is not finished, so we'll count this as a work in progress, even though I can show you the finished product. Did you block it? Yeah, I did. Oh. This, this is, uh, or I should say these are, the Poet Socks by Sari Nordland. I'll see if I can get the texture. So I chose to go ahead and block this because if you are familiar with lace work, you probably understand that, oh, there's like a giant piece of fuzz right there, <laughs> that lace work does not really always look very good until it's been blocked. And so I just wanted to show what she's actually going to look like. Like we can see the vision, right? I always block my socks at the same time because I'm always scared. You know, when you like block things, you can kind of like stretch it and manipulate it. I'm always scared that I'm going to stretch or manipulate one to be different than the other and I feel like if I'm blocking them at the same time I can tell like okay like visually these guys look the same or yeah, I can, can re-block it yeah but like I don't want to re-block something <laughs> I understand <laughs> uh, and these might look familiar because I have knit the poet socks before but I got this yarn from I kept the label so I could say the name this is Sagan hand dyed yarn from Elk Market in the base Ratatosk. And this was a color that was like, I don't know if I'm correct in the term, but I'm going to say mist dye. Like she was going for a specific color and something went different. And so she didn't get the exact color she was going for, but still liked the color and put it out for sale. I think at a cheaper price than what this base would normally go for. And so she called it Monster One. I think she's still got some available. I'm sorry if I'm wrong about that, but I think that's right. And so I think she was going for like a little bit more green and it's kind of an olive goldish green. 
I love that though. Yeah, I loved it. I was like, I like this better than what she was going for even. So I bought three skeins, which would have been a sweater quantity, but I have just not found it in my heart to cast on a fingering weight garment right now. And so, and I was just like really, I could picture the poet socks in this. So I cast it on. This is 100% Corydale, which is my first time making socks that are 100% natural fiber. So I'm very excited to see how I like that. You can definitely tell it's a very like strong fiber, the Corydale, which I have heard that it's, it holds up well. So hopefully we're right about that. But yeah. Well, I also have a pair of socks, so I'll grab those real quick. And I'm kind of in a similar space where, yeah, I, I finished one and then I have one that's still on the needle. So you can see this one's also a pair of toe up socks. Um, and so this one I'm like getting close to being able to start the gusset. But these are the Kohaku socks by Yuka. And mine are not blocked like Rachel's are. <laughs> Um, so I don't know if you'll be able to like really you can't see the appreciate, vision right? <laughs> yeah <laughs> the vision of these guys but what I really liked about them was this like pointed cable detail on the toe I thought that was really cute um because originally for this yarn which is um natural sock yarn by coast to coast in the color button uh, I was envisioning the lingerie socks if anyone's familiar with that pattern but I liked that this one had more cables than that particular pattern and the heel on that one is a little more complex or at least it looks like it is in pictures and I, I didn't necessarily want like a complex heel. I was just like looking for something that had cables or lace or something down the front because I love this white yarn and I feel like the white just really enhances those like textures and details and things like that. So. I did make quite a few modifications to this pattern though, in that um, the pattern designer does have you start the toe or like this like cable point detail a little bit higher on the sock. And I lowered it by about a centimeter and a half, just cause I wanted it a little bit closer to the toe like that lingerie sock pattern. And then the other thing was the pattern does call for a short row heel, which I'm sure is beautiful and well written and would have been lovely. I just really prefer to do um, a gusset heel turn and heel flap when I'm making socks. And so I increase the number of stitches that you're supposed to cast on by four in order to be able to do this like slip stitch heel gusset and heel flap. <laughs> So those are the only modifications that I've made was just changing where you start the pattern and then changing the heel type. And I haven't really had any issues with it. Uh, since I don't knit toe, so toe up socks as often as I do like cuff down, I did overestimate how much uh, material I needed in the foot the first time I knit this. And so I ended up knitting like the whole heel situation, oh, no. like the whole gusset and heel and everything. And then I realized that the foot, like this part right here was going to be way too long. So I had to undo that and I ripped out like eight rows, which was about an inch and then redid it. But I took notes on how many rows I did for the first one. So I'm not going to have that same problem for this one, which is nice. I know, I feel like everyone talks about second sock syndrome, but I personally really like it because I feel like I don't have to do any mental work on it. Yes, you're like, I've already done the first <laughs> yeah. one, I'm just gonna make it exactly like that. <laughs> yes, yes. Same with sleeves, honestly. Yeah. Like once I figure out what sleeve length, I'm like, the next one goes by so fast. Yeah. <laughs> so my next work in progress is like barely here, but that's okay. <laughs> but I. I've talked about this for a little while now because I bought the yarn a while ago thinking I was going to cast on. It didn't happen. We talked about this in 2024 goals, but I cast on the Nord Pullover. This is a pattern by Hannah Redman. And what can I say about it right now? Because I'm not very far into it. I'm using, <laughs> let me see, I kept the label. I'm using the Fiberco Cumbria Fingering which I believe is 90% wool and 10% mohair. And then I'm also holding it with a mohair, which is the Sandus Garn Tin Silk Mohair. I think 
this is a number name, so I don't remember the name, but I saw on a website where somewhere called this beige. So we're, we're going with beige. And then the black trim that I've got right here is knitting for all of <laughs> uh, both their merino and soft silk mohair. And I think they call this licorice. I did not keep the label for this. Whatever their black is, I think that's right. But we're not positive. Uh, I cast this on, I was very, very excited. And then I realized that there are 14 centimeters of twisted rib. Oh, I hate twisted rib. <laughs> I love the way it looks. It looks I'm already beautiful. doubting if I'm actually going to do all of that or if I am going to shorten the ribbing a little bit. I will still keep it a very long ribbing, but 14 centimeters is a lot. This is going to take forever. So it's knit from like the, the bottom, bottom up. up. Okay. Yes. I actually haven't fully read through the pattern, but yeah, I know it's a bottom up construction, which has been a while since I've done one of those. So that will be um, a nice change of pace, I think. I know some people don't like bottom up constructions. I do. I've never really had an issue with them. Same. Some of my favorite sweaters are like the bottom up construction. Yeah, I really I do think it just takes a little bit more like awareness when you're doing the yoke. Yeah. yeah. But a lot of people I think struggle with what the length should be. And you see, I tuck everything into my pants anyway. So I don't stress quite as much as I think others probably do, which is understandable if you want the right length for what you're getting. Um, yeah. So yeah, I'm super excited to work on this, but yeah, I don't, I don't know. I, I've seen where some people keep it like the pattern and it's so pretty. I do love a long ribbing. It can look really pretty. But I've also seen someone Ravelry where they shorten it and I'm like, that would be appealing and it still looks good. So we'll see. We'll update next time. Yeah. Um, well, my second whip and only other whip is the Judy sweater by Gregoria Fibers. Actually, I'm holding it upside down. This I is, love that pattern. This is going to be the back right now, so it's very textury. It's very oversized. Well, I'm making the third size because the first two sizes I didn't think would be enough positive ease, which is rare for me. I usually make like the first or second size, but I wanted it to kind of fit like the storm sweater. And so in order to get a similar amount of positive ease, yeah, I went up to the third size. So I'm hoping I don't regret that decision, but I think for this type of textury sweater, I would almost rather it be on the larger size than on the smaller size yeah. or side. Um, so I am using wool stock by Blue Sky Fibers. It's just one of my favorite yarns. I will use it to death. <laughs> it's just a really good like workhouse or workhorse, like everyday yarn. It's just good for a lot of projects. So I'll hold it up and see if you can see some of the texture. I was really inspired to make this because Marlene Knits made this and talked in her um, like everything I made in 2023 video about how much she loved that sweater and how much she wears it. And since I love texture, I thought this would be a good, good one to cast on. So I am enjoying it. It's kind of just like a bunch of like blocks separated by little rows of eyelets. I will say, um, this pattern does start with short rows, which was a little frustrating just because with this texture, when you're doing short rows, you know, you're always going to be knitting like a right side over what the previous right side was for like those like few stitches that you're like moving over. I don't know if that makes sense. Like moving like the few stitches that you knit past where you had previously knit. So it looked fine on one side because it had previously been a wrong side, but on this side, I don't know if I'm making any sense. Basically, long story short, this was not an easy pattern to do short rows in, and I think it might have been a little bit easier if the pattern writer had done like increases on the side in order to get shaping. Because to be honest, there's not even that much shaping. Like the difference between yeah, it's subtle. It's very subtle, the difference between the top and the bottom here. So I don't know, it, to be determined if it was worth doing that or not, but it wasn't my favorite short row experience just because it was kind of difficult to, to, 
to gauge it, to like stay in pattern while doing the short rows and have it look good. Yes. Yeah. I only have acquisitions left and I don't have many. Same. Okay. I One of them is the same. Oh yeah, one of them is. Yeah. Yeah. So, man, it's been a long time. It's almost the end of January. <laughs> this was a Christmas gift. So, uh, Coast to Coast did an advent calendar for their coffee house collection or fantasy coffee house collection. We did not buy the advents. It's kind of a lot of money for yarn that you don't know what it's going to look like. So we've not done advents before, but I do always get FOMO around the holiday season when everyone's <laughs> opening theirs and I'm like, I don't have one. Um, and so uh, Coast to Coast did a like separate collect or not collection, separate drop mystery I, skein yeah mystery skein <laughs> yeah um of just one color that went with the collection which was the sprinkle donut colorway and so I knew it was coming but I got one for Jessica as well yeah and I did not wait till the new year to open this I'm not gonna lie but I waited to share it because I know that there were people that would want it to be a mystery. It was intended to be something you open like on the first day of 2024. Yep. So excited to knit some socks with this. Yes. And I actually was really excited about this yarn because it paired perfect with this purple yarn that I've had in oh, my yeah, stash for a long well. time. Yeah, this is Emma's yarn that I've had for quite a while. Not this past Christmas, but the previous Christmas. I used this color to knit my mom a pair of socks for Christmas. That was two years ago? Yeah. That's wild. Well, not, not this past year, but the year before. Yeah. Yeah. So here, I'll try to see if I can show both, but I think they're going to pair really nicely together to have uh, like a contrast color for a pair of socks. Yeah. Well, I guess I didn't really do a good close-up of this color. Mine, I think, shows a little bit more of the purple. Yeah. Yeah. So let's see if we can get... I think yours is just wound in a, in a different way that shows yes. it off a little bit better. It's like mostly a beige base, but then it's got these really pretty purpley speckles. And then there's also some like, oh, is it focusing? Um, hopefully that's focusing well. If not, we'll put a picture in it. Um, almost like different colors. Like there's like little spots of like deeper purple and even orange. And it's just really cute. Yeah, I like it. I have a couple other yeah, acquisitions. Yeah, do one more. Do. I've only got one more. Okay. Um, well, I'll share. I talked about this in a little bit in our knitting plans for the year, but I did order some Rama Garn yarn in um, the Fibble base. And I ordered this to make the Haraboji cardigan by Egyo, uh, which I think I said incorrectly last time, so my apologies for that. Uh, this is a Korean word, so the pattern name stands for Grandpa in Korean. So I said that wrong last time, so my apologies for that. Um, but I did go ahead and swatch for the pattern. So you can kind of see what it, it knits up like in the seed stitch. My hesitancy, I, so I, I love the pattern. I think it's absolutely beautiful and I'm really intrigued by the construction because it's knit where you like start with the sleeve and then you knit towards the body and, and then it's like knit this way not vertically yeah it's knit like all horizontally <laughs> not vertically like you would see most knitwear so that's really intriguing to me the only thing that's like really scaring me about the pattern is that it it only comes in three sizes which is horrible and then the second thing is that the pattern says that there's a recommended positive ease of 7 to 48 centimeters which is a huge range like that's <laughs> there's a big difference between seven and 48 centimeters and I was looking at the pattern and like comparing it to my circumference and to make the smallest size I would still be on the smaller end it wouldn't quite be 48 centimeters but it would still be a lot so I, I know when you're like wearing a sweater it's a little bit different because we're you know humans or have like roundness or like a circumference <laughs> we're not just flat but like if we pretend that like I'm flat then the positive ease that I would have would like come out almost to my elbows so your sleeves would be like so my sleeves would be like a little or stubby. super long yeah well the sleeves are only 16 
inches approximately when I like measured those. Well, but this is 17 inches. Yeah. So this, so I feel like the sleeves are going to be too long. The sleeves would be too long. And then just the positive ease would come out like huge on me. <laughs> and I know, you know, like I said, like we're round, not flat. So it wouldn't be quite as dramatic as I'm making it out to be, but it would still be really oversized. And so I still am just so intrigued by the construction and since I've never knit like a, a horizontal piece like that. But I kind of want to go into this piece with the mindset that I'm making it for someone else, not for me, because if it looks horrible on me, I don't want to be disappointed by it. But you could go into it hoping it's for you, but have it in mind that you could give it away. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. That's kind of what I'm thinking. Uh, we have a really good friend who is super knit worthy. Um, and I've actually knit her a white cardigan before, but it didn't have enough positive ease. And she really loves things to be like super oversized on her, like give her all the positive ease, like 48 centimeters of positive ease would not scare her. Um, but she's a little bit bigger than me, so it wouldn't be quite as quite dramatic. Bad. Yeah, it wouldn't be quite as dramatic. Um, I think it would fit really well on her. So I think I'm going to commit to it, but yeah, I'm going to go into it like, oh, it'd be cool if it fits me, but if it doesn't, it's perfect. I really need to knit another cardigan for this friend anyways, because the first one that I knit didn't fit her the way that I think she likes to wear her clothes. So I think this pattern would be a little closer to like her style, a little more up her alley. So that's kind of the mindset that I think I'm going to go into this with. Yes. Yeah. I've got one more acquisition. Okay. And it's kind of an acquisition and kind of not because we've seen this yarn before. This is Stannis Garn Sunday in the color Into the Woods, which I knit an Oslo hat out of. Uh, I kind of interpret this as a green, but then I saw where High Fiber Knits um, is using this yarn too, and she called it a brown. So it's, I would say it's like an olive. It's like a deep foresty olive color. It's it's still green to me. I don't, I don't know. know. Whatever it is, I love it so much. And I had a really kind of person on Instagram message me and tell me that it is being discontinued. I was so sad and I panicked and I bought 12 more skeins of this. <laughs> I already have two in stash. I cannot figure out the dye lot. They look identical to me. The numbers that it has here, let me see if I can show the numbers, are the same on the skeins I bought and the skeins that I had, but I bought them from two completely different places. So Maybe I, you just looked out. <laughs> I, I truly don't know, but they look identical. So even if they're separate dye lots, I'm not afraid to mix them. But I don't really know that I'll even need that much. I will probably end up having some in stash. I do want to knit another olive or another Oslo hat out of them. But in addition, I have more than enough for a sweaters quantity. Originally, I bought the amount that I did thinking that I would hold it double for a sweater and I did not have a pattern in mind. But now I am thinking that I will attempt to acquire Issachar's mohair in the color 68, which I think will pair well with this. The person who messaged me and told me about this also said that that might be a good, or maybe they gave me the idea, um, but that might be a good pairing. So I have not bought that yet, but I'm going to try it. And I'm leaning most towards, sorry, Nordland's, I think it's pronounced our sweater, uh, which would be a fingering plus a mohair held together. And I think that'd be a really beautiful fit for this. I guess I'm kind of on a sorry Nordland kick because I've got I finished the Colette, I've got the Poet on the needles, and then, yeah, I think this might be my next cast on, so we will see. I made the Hour pullover a couple years ago, and I used Isayer's... Is that how you say it? I said Isayer. Is is oh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I um, probably said that wrong, I'm sorry. <laughs> well, I used one of their fingerings held together with mohair, and it was beautiful. I really love that sweater, but it is, a, it is another bottom-up construction. I don't mind. So I've actually yep. never used that brand and I know everyone sings praises about their mohair. So I'm very excited to try that. Oh, I do like it. I've used it a couple yeah, of times. Yeah, everyone who yeah. I see working with it is like, it's the best. And yeah, yeah, it'll be fun. Oh. 
Speaking of mohair, my last acquisition is some mohair. So uh, We Are Knitters reached out to me and they offered to send me some yarn. So they have sent me their Touch Me Mohair in the color Forest Green. To be honest, I was very nervous when they reached out to me because I feel like when everyone starts uh, garment knitting, they tend to like, not everyone, I'm stereotyping, but I feel like a lot of people in the knitting community when they're like getting into garment knitting, they will purchase like Wool in the Gang or We Are Knitters because it comes in a kit and ourselves included. We yeah, I was going to say, it's honestly very helpful when you're starting out and it's overwhelming to know what supplies you need. Like I do see the benefit in kit knitting when you're a beginner and you don't know. Yeah. So, but looking back on some of the patterns that we used at that time, like a lot of them were just not... <laughs> Not what I would not what I would look for now in a pattern. Like most of them didn't have any sort of shaping or anything. It was just like a bunch of like rectangles that you sew together and like call it a day. <laughs> and it's like I just want to make sure that like I'm not obligated to like share any particular like pattern or, or opinion. Opinion, yeah, like anything like that. Um, and they were super open. They were like, "No, we're just gonna send it to you. No strings attached. Like it's yours." You know. So I was definitely open to that. I'm like, so they did send this to me and then they also sent me the Shine Sweater by November Knits. And I was more inclined to try that pattern because it was coming from an external designer, like a collaborator who-, who And did... I've done November Knits patterns before and yeah. I really like them. Yes. So, so I was kind of curious to see like what a pattern would be like when, when they were not the one, when We Are Knitters wasn't the ones who wrote it, but like someone else externally wrote it and just like gave them the rights to the pattern. I was kind of curious to see if that would work out better, if I would like enjoy that pattern writing style more. However, <laughs> I have swatched using that yarn for that particular shine sweater pattern and I'm not loving how open it is. This is two strands of the mohair held together just in stocking up. And it's not horrible, but I do feel like it's a little holier or like airier than I want for a sweater. So I, I need to swatch again, but I'm kind of contemplating using this yarn for just like a, another basic raglan, but one that uses a smaller gauge. So if anyone has any pattern recommendations, I'm definitely open to ideas. I do love the idea of using it for like a basic raglan that I can wear when I'm like working from home and stuff. Um, I. I wear those types of sweaters all the time. I get a lot of use out of them. And I do think this color is kind of fun because it's just like a little brighter or darker than what I normally go for. So I do think it'll be fun to knit with like a color that's a little bit outside of some of the other colors that I've been using recently. But I'm kind of thinking maybe I'll use the Monday sweater by Petite Knit because I've already knit that sweater before and I already have the pattern. And I believe I knit that on like a US 7. Whereas this swatch was a US 9. Oh, yeah. So I feel like the, because it's not horrible, it's just like a little more open than I want. So I think if I go down a needle size or two, it'll be perfect. So that's kind of what I'm leaning towards, but I'm still open to other thoughts or ideas. I know the Stockholm sweater by Petite Knit 2 uh, recommends using two strands, strands of mohair, whereas the Monday sweater recommends like a mohair and a fingering. So I did think maybe I could like buy some fingering and combine it with it. But if you've got enough mohair if, for a sweater pommy. Yeah, that's the thing is that if I got some fingering weight and paired with it, I would have so much leftover mohair that I wouldn't know what to do with. So ideally, I think I want to use two strands of mohair held together, just like use it all up. Um, I do really like the yarn, actually. It's really soft. Um, let me check what it is. It's 54% baby alpaca, 24% mulberry silk, and then 22% super kid mohair. So I do think it's slightly denser or like has a little bit more halo than a lot of mohairs, which is kind of fun too. So that's my last acquisition. <laughs> we'll, we'll see what this ends up becoming, but very open to ideas at the moment. Yeah, I've got an acquisition that actually I'm kind of hoping is here soon. It wasn't when we started filming this, but um, it's in the mail. It's in the mail and it's supposed to come today which is yarn from Pearl Soho for a baby sweater. So I'll try to share that next time because uh, unfortunately, while I am really enjoying my whips, I will have to stop and do that very soon. The shower is next month and it's the end of January right now. So 
It's coming Baby sitters up. are fast, so you'll be fine. Yeah, I keep telling myself, I'm like, I'm going to knit this in a week. But I better be right about that, because if not, I'm going to be stressed. stressed. Uh, so we'll share that next time. But uh, I think those are all the things we have for you today. Yeah, if you've made it this far, thank you so much for joining us. We'd love to hear about what you were working on as we chatted about what we're working on. Thank you so much for joining us.